We are all familiar with names like Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and Apple, which are household names. But how familiar are we with the tech companies that are putting the ghost into the machines we use on a daily basis? We will examine just a handful of these companies, the technology they're noted for, and how it's being integrated into devices you use on a daily basis. It is important to note that several of these companies received initial funding from military and defense contracts before moving into the commercial sector. Face First. Face First provides a fully automated, user-friendly turnkey mobile and live video surveillance facial recognition system, which generates automated alerts whenever a face match above a user-defined probability is reached. Face First has a completely open and scalable system architecture. Face First technology excels in low resolution environments, enabling real world performance. The technology being um, developed by this company is being used in not only retail but other commercial establishments, basically using the biometrics of your facial recognition digital file as a browser cookie. The low light or low level less than favorable ambient conditions that they boast that they can track you in include establishments such as casinos, restaurants, nightclub, bars, parking garages, etc. Face First is also actively partnered with law enforcement, pushing their software products out to local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies across the country. The following is just a 24 sec second clip, a marketing clip that is going out to law enforcement across the nation. Everyone is being scammed. It is a force multiplier with the ability to detect fake identification, send automatic alerts of wanted persons, real time covert operations, and large international install base. Like I said, everyone will be being monitored. Phase 6, a competitor to Phase First and arguably more advanced in their technology, boasts the ability to accurately identify um, faces in photos and in live video streaming by using machine deep learning. In other words, this particular software can identify this person as this person with or without a beard. When asked about privacy issues, the company responded, of course it's possible to exploit the technology in a harmful way, much like bugging phones or hacking computers. But as you know, the bottom line, the responsibility is in the hands of the user. They went on to say that these days, the subject occupies those who fight for freedom and individual privacy, principally in the U.S. The FBI launched an impressive facial recognition project over, valued over $1 billion last year, and the fears are caused mostly by Big Brother policies and less by consumer users. So phase six is acknowledging the potential and probability that these technologies will be used and abused by governments. Silver Push and other ultrasonic beacon trackers. Silver Push is a company based out of India who in 2013 developed an application or technology dubbed bad BIOS. This technology can cross over input and output devices such as your speakers, mouse, keyboard, etc. This software has been upgraded to track input output on cell phones and smart TVs. As of last year, 
Silver Push, and various other companies have developed over 30 different applications that are now estimated to be installed on over 18 million communication and handheld devices, as well as smart TVs. What is it and how does it work? Silver Push's software kit can be baked into applications and is designed to pick up near ultrasonic um, frequency waves embedded in TV, radio, or web browser advertising. These signals in the range of 18 to 20 kilohertz are much too high pitched for most humans to hear, but can be decoded by other software. An application, for instance, that uses Silverpush's code can pick up these messages from a phone or tablet's built-in microphone and be directed to send information such as the handheld's I MEI number, its location, operating system, and version, and potentially to identify the owners of those handheld devices and communicate that information to the application's backend servers. It was noted in, in this article that this type of technology is fundamentally serendipitous in that it doesn't require consent. If it did, they noted, the number of users would go down. It lacks the ability to have consumers say they don't want this or to be associated with the software. There is no informed consent. This makes such software technically illegal in Europe and possibly in the US, but they are in fact using this software in the United States. They went on to note that this doesn't need to be used for just advertising. What if a, rep um, a repressive regime or a government regime decided to use it to track phones of dissidents, track the types of conversations, track your location, and track your edges on the network?